part of our, our um, regular uh, monthly Christian transhumanist public talk that we've just started. Uh, so I'll just uh, share my screen if I can work out how to do that. Okay, can everyone see that? You can see a thing saying nature of conscious. That's good. Okay. I can see it. All right. What I'm going to do today is just talk in general terms about um, ideas about consciousness and where things are um, in in scientific and in popular discourse. Uh, I'm not not going to lay down any. Um, black and white position, but what I'm going to do is just say these are the facts, these are the theories, and just have try, try to have people not, not go off in any, um, on any deep ends, because it, it strikes me that there's a lot of um, confusion, misinformation, and, and quite sloppy thinking around this. So what we're talking about is, firstly, that it, there's an easy problem, and I'm, my fellow Australian Dave Chalmers can be credited with uh, defining the difference between the easy problem, which is the neural correlates of consciousness, you know, what goes off in my brain to certain things, and the hard problem, which is why do we experience experience itself? Why, why are there, and this is what is described as qualia. Has everyone heard the word qualia before? It mean, means the uh, qualia is the experience of seeing blue or seeing red or feeling the wind on your face or something. I'm just going to run through um, where where things are at, and just just sort of a bit of a, a way forward for for us CTAs uh, as as we go down this journey, so that we're pre we're prepared as as new discoveries occur and as new ideas emerge, we can I guess respond in in an intelligent manner. All right, um, who's who's seen this uh, this android before? Anyone seen her? Her name is Sophia. I so. Saw um, I actually saw her face to face at CES uh, two years ago. Or, that's excellent. You know, walking around. So I saw her. I saw her at the um, Institution of Engineers conference in Sydney, and that was. Uh, and so I, um, I was interested in people's attitudes, so I just did this quiet little survey amongst um, the people that I was around, and and people you're, you're chatting to during a three day conference. And I asked two questions. I firstly asked. Do you think that Sophia um, is entitled to human rights? And then just as an experiment, I just kind of casually found out if they were interested in their social media profile or not. Because I, I had a theory that I wanted to test. So I classified the answers to question one into two broad categories. Uh, question one is, oh, broad category is, yeah, it's something we could talk about. Uh, yes, she, she is entitled to it. Uh, yes, she appears conscious, therefore she is. And, and the other broad category was, no, he or, or she or, or it, um, which I was a little disturbed about initially, that people wanted to, some people wanted to completely degender Sophia, um, deserves the same human rights as my iPad. Well, I sort of probed a little bit of the degendering. It, it, it was confronting at first, but after a while, I understood that it came from a place of people wanting to, I guess, dispel what, what they perceived as BS. But what was striking was this correlation that all those who, who were Twitter freaks or, or asked people to follow them publicly or, or I knew were, were social media um, pushes uh, cared about uh, and answered that social positive. media pushers <laughs> it's not yeah. crack man <laughs> I, 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 i'm not sure that it isn't i think it is crack <laughs> so and on the other hand um, those who who don't care about their social media profile uh, nearly all said um no and I, I found that astonishing uh, it was it was bigger than i thought it would be and that that's We've all seen there's a difference between what's going on on Twitter and what's going on in real life. We've seen the difference between the Wall Street economy and the Main Street economy. We've seen the difference between what's going on in polling and what's going on in voting. So you just have to uh, be careful to, to think in a really discerning manner about this sort of stuff um, and, and to look at things from many different angles until you can come up with uh, with a sensible way forward and, and not jump on... on uh, exciting bandwagon. All right, so I'm going to run through uh, the potential solutions that, are, that exist for um, 
to the, the hard problem of, of uh, consciousness. And firstly, there's, there's the old dualism, the substance dualism. And a lot of people still believe this. In fact, I, I heard it yesterday that there must be some other kind of substance that, that's involved. There's also property dualism. So there's, and there's two kinds of property dualism. There's a, a weak emergence that whenever you get enough complexity, consciousness is going to emerge. And then there's a, a strong emergence that says after a particular level, then a different set of laws kick in that, that causes consciousness. There's also monism or, or materialism, that there's only one type of matter and only one set of physical laws. And there's three types. There's the Daniel Dennett consciousness is, is an illusion. There's uh, type B, which says consciousness is, is emergent and the, the gap is only one of knowledge that we'll get over eventually. And there's type C that says we're not smart enough to get over this. We just gotta, gotta live with it and we'll never be able to, to fully investigate it. And then there's another version of monism that says the only thing that exists is, is idealism. And so to, to emphasize the, the stark difference between the monist extremes, you've got uh, Daniel Dennett who says there's no such thing as consciousness, it's an illusion and immaterial is real. You've got uh, Deepak Chopra who says there's no such thing as material reality, only consciousness is real. So the, and the, these people are running around with, with big social media followings and making a lot of noise. And I guess, yeah, how to spot a fundamentalist. <laughs> High powered evidence filters. <clears throat> I think we need them. Some don't. There we um, go. That's what I'm waiting go. for. You're waiting for panpsychism. I thought you might be Lincoln. I thought Lincoln's going to spark up on this one. Uh, <clears throat> yep, that, that's, a, that's a possibility. Uh, and another one is quantum consciousness, the, the Roger Penrose uh, concept. He says consciousness is not algorithmic, therefore, it's not computable. There's the whole Boltzmann brain idea. Yeah. Which um, says that if we're going to have a big bang to produce a universe, it's much more likely to have a big bang that produces a big sloppy wet brain that, that, that's um, deluding itself that we all exist. And you then start thinking about the reliability of sense data and that and you know, go down some rabbit holes. But um, those of you who've hung around me long enough um, know that I'm not going to approach any topic without uh, coming injecting a little bit of um, simulation creation thought into that um, and I, I find something interesting in this and that um, Pope John Paul is his, his uh, when he officially brought evolution into the Catholic Church's teaching he said at some point God injected a soul now maybe that's like saying at some point a second set of uh, maybe that's the same as um strong emergence where a, se a separate set of laws kick in at a certain level of complexity and maybe there's a crossover between that strong emergence and the panpsychism that as those laws kick in the the panpsychism kind of it comes together um, we've, we've got this whole thing going around um with elon musk asking the ai what's outside the simulation that, that clip that i've posted a, a few times um, and, the, and this, this is a great way to dialogue with people and say, look, there has to be something external to the simulation. Um, there has to be intelligence outside what we see. And why? Because within the, the universe, as we perceive it, um, any grand cosmology involving multiverses and Schrodinger wave equations and all sorts of things, you're, everything breaks down to either a brute fact, the just so-ism, or infinite regression. And uh, I regard both of those as, as uh, deeply unsatisfying at best and, and maybe totally incoherent. So what you can then say is if causality and, and time are a feature of the simulation, then suddenly a lot of things make sense. And external simulation, what, what we think of as causality would have some kind of materially different quality that, that we don't, that we, we can't get our heads around, but maybe we will in the future. All right, so if that, if there, and I believe it's beyond reasonable doubt that there's a simulator external to the simulation, then we've got to, you then start asking questions about uh, whether that being would, would be interventionist, uh, 
whether there'd be the, the injection of souls theory. I mean, link in your tradition has a a, uh, a pre mortal existence, so you know that that makes that makes sense. Uh, one thing I would add is um, yep. when when asked uh, about what is the single biggest implication you think of uh, simulation theory, when Nick Bostrom was asked, the creator yep. of simulation theory, right, um, uh, what's the single biggest implication? He said, and he's like a hardcore atheist, right? Like, and he said, yep. uh, I think we should be open to the idea there is a heaven. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I, I found that super powerful because even in uh, in Muslim theology, uh, Islamic theology. Uh, what is it called? The Kalam cosmological argument. It's a yeah. It has influenced all the modern uh, Islamic theological thought and this idea of like yeah, like our reality is hmm. you know a simulation that we're trying to escape from. Uh, we're trying to that, that's right. And this whole concept of well, you know, if you posit a first cause and you say there's an uncreated creator, and a lot of people pipe up and say, well, you know, who created that? Ha ha, got you there. But hang on, just said it was created, and so that. That, that's the level of how poor some of the some of the thinking is that's out there. One Basically. related thought on this too. Recently, there's been some discussion about the observable universe being a neural net. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think that that creates a very interesting integration between. Um, I prefer to say computation rather than simulation because simulation means yeah. it's not real. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, between the computation. Um, hypothesis and panpsychism, where yeah. the mind of God is pervasive and is running this computation. And, you know, in whom we live and move and have our being, as the scriptures yeah, say. Yeah. 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 Well, look, uh, I, I, I can't consider the, the question of consciousness without considering um, this dot point that. Uh, uh, to me, they're, they're totally interlinked. And we, we've just had some really good suggestions and intelligent thought about how they might uh, make sense together. All right, another thing that often comes up is this conscious observer thing in quantum mechanics. So the Copenhagen uh, interpretation, they started off saying observation, but they sort of transitioned to saying measurement. And the famous phrase, shut up and calculate, appears, um, which I, I support to the sense that an instrumental view of science, instrumentalism meaning that the only purpose of experiments is to predict the outcome of future experiments and uh, make, make, make sense, but once again is deeply unsatisfying and people use the, the maths works perfectly and no one knows why, or no one will admit why. It does seem from the classic double slit experiment that um, photons and electrons behave differently, whether they're measured or, or maybe observed. And some people have defined uh, consciousness as the ability to collapse a wave function. Now I posited that on, on our Facebook group a few years ago, it might've been three or four years ago. And I've since learned that that's called the von Neumann Wigner interpretation. It, it remains a minority view, but you know, so did plate tectonics for many years. Uh, there's, there's reasons for that, but I think it's at, at least good and one thing I'll be saying later is to make sure you understand the history of this thought and read, read deeply because it's all very well to have ideas, but um, a lot of us are original thinkers, but uh, there'll be a lot of, uh, there's a lot of original thinkers in the past who've had the same original thought, you know, so. Uh, Indeed. Yeah. Sometimes well, it's uh, spooky when those original thinkers were born thousands of years ago too. It makes us feel stupid. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, that, that's why one thing I came across in the NTRI book that I mentioned, I, I read that recently, is uh, it's this um, movement within Christianity, early Christianity, called Gnosticism. Yep. NTRI is not a fan, right? Because he thinks, you know, our resurrection is going to be embodied, right, in a more Jewish sense, right? So there's no, but like the Gnostics, on the other hand, are the, basically to summarize, the, I realized that part of the divergence between the Gnostics and the non-Gnostics, right? Uh, is, was over demon possession. Right. Because basically the non-Gnostics were like, no, no, we're just redeeming the body, right? You know, there's going to be like, you know, Eden 2.0. Uh, and they were kind of just downplayed. They were like, yeah, yeah, demons are not going to be a thing after Jesus. And then the Gnostics were like, no, no, demons exist precisely because our reality is, um, 
I guess yeah. more complex, you know, they, they have more mystical terms, right, to kind of describe it, but like if we had to steel man it, you know. That, that, that's much, right, and, and, the, and the, the complexity of our reality is uh, every year goes by, we learn something more complex about it. Okay, um, so Neuralink, obviously uh, a big thing that's uh, very trendy, and, uh, and this is related to the neural correlates of conscious, consciousness, which at the moment is, is um, probably going to give us a massive uh, industrial boom and industrial uh, and a boom. There's a lot of engineering, basic science. Um, what, was, what we have proven is um, mapping brain injuries to, uh, to behave to behavior, and that, that's given strong, uh, irrefutable evidence of the link between mind and brain. Um, but it still doesn't address the hard problem: why do we have consciousness? Has anyone heard the analogy of the, I've seen it a few places on the internet, the Kalahari Bushman with the radio. So there's this, um, a, a primitive tribesman finds a, a transistor radio and imagine one of those sort of 1960s transistor radios with batteries that's, you know, sort of not quite shoebox size. And imagine he finds that and twiddles and knobs on the front and noises come out and he, he takes the batteries out and they stop and he puts them back in and they start again and he takes one of the transistors out and, and the voices go tinny and he puts it back in and they're fine. And he can do all that and think, great, now I understand radios, right? But he, but he has no conception that there's a, a broadcast tower and a studio full of people 50 kilometers away. Right? All of our laws of physics might be the same. <clears throat> yep, there, there might only be one electron in the, in the, in the universe. <laughs> there's another theory, but you know, uh, so we've got to be got to be really discerning here to say, um, yeah, to say that neural correlates are going to be a, a massive um, bit of uh, GDP growth globally in the near future, but doesn't solve uh, the problem of qualia, the hard consciousness. Right, people talk about consciousness and computation, and that's a, that's a key, a clear question here. If I just stick enough terabytes in my laptop, is it going to become conscious? Um, Not like you and me. I, I, I agree on that front, Lincoln. The human brains, the, the, most neurons aren't conscious and they compute in a different way. I don't think I agree there's, 100%. Yeah. There's a lot of natural language. Um, I'll talk about my day job in a minute, but uh, you know, Project Debater and AI and IBM Watson, they appear intelligent. They can hold a conversation almost. They can make quite intelligent comments, but I know how that stuff works. They're just glorified search engines. So, you know, it, it, it may have, even if we build a, an AGI, it may have internal to itself an accurate representation of itself that is managing and that it's improving. But it's still a long draw to say that that, that thing is experiencing qualia. Um, and Roger Penrose asked the question, does computation give rise to consciousness or is it vice versa? So I think it's something. legitimate yeah. to ask ourselves if, you know, computers are experien experiencing a computer kind of qualia that we have no access to and don't know anything about and might be so alien that we can't, can't even conceptualize. But I think it, most of the time when people ask if a computer can become conscious, they mean like a human. They do. And that's a, that's a really interesting point, Lincoln. That's a, that's a good one. I hadn't thought of that. All right. Has anyone seen this um, Amazon original series? Yeah, it was uh, fun. Yeah. I, I binge watched it on a rainy Saturday afternoon one day for those, those like 10 episodes of sort of half an hour each. I guess it was, you've got to have some things that are just complete waste of time in your life. And that was one of them for me. Uh, I think yeah, it, it's asking the question, is an AI version of us an entity or an emulation? Can we upload ourselves uh, or, or do we do that? Is it, is it an imitation? And I'm, I've told my kids already, I plan to leave an emulation of myself behind to annoy them mainly. Uh, so, and a good analogy is a tool. So a tool that you use all the time that you're really familiar with, your, your brain makes it feel like it's almost part of yourself. So if I'm 
playing the piano, I'm, I'm playing music and the music flows from my head, through my fingers and out of the machine and, and sort of, um, I, I don't have to consciously think about where I put my fingers, they just, they just go there. If, you, if I'm riding my bike, which, is, which I do every day, it's a, I'm a bike freak, ask Dave Winyard, he's always following me on Strava. Um, you feel the, the road through your tires, you feel the bumps. Um, the you know the, the qualia are in my head. They're not in the bike. What what I will say is that the Christian expectation of resurrection, which I I, I believe to be reliable, because um, you know, Jesus said so and he's a reliable character, um, implies recreating our consciousness on some other substrate. Specifically, we're told we'll have a you know, new body. So, but what we don't know is if that technology is available inside the simulation, or if it could be outside the simulation to do that. Reserve powers of God, if you like. Yeah, uh, this I, I, is, this yeah. is the one thing that has always made me think, could we get to the point where we could upload our minds? And what would that say about the soul if we got to that point? I think we could upload our minds in the sense that we would create an emulation of ourselves. But the, the continuity of consciousness, I think that's a huge leap. Even if, Here's a thought experiment for you. Yep. Hey, give me the what if instead of breaking it in half like that, where we imagine our, you know, uploading our consciousness yeah. somewhere else, what if we create a... Um, artificial brain yeah. and we attach it to our biological brain yep. using neural link and, yep. and we um, allow our consciousness if assuming that's possible allow our consciousness to inhabit both and then as yep. our biological brain dies off we remain conscious in the artificial brain the interesting thing about this thought experiment is that you can do it very gradually. You could do it one artificial neuron at a time. And we have to ask ourselves, do we think that we would lose consciousness uh, during the process? My, my position is that, no, I don't think we would. And I do think that we can be conscious on a, an artificial brain. Um, I think it would be horrible to experience that without having an autonomy of a body but I do think it's possible. Hmm. And I think it's the structure of the information. Like I said, I don't think, I don't think just any old complexity is sufficient. I think that there, there may be some kind of computer alien consciousness associated with alien forms of complexity. Hmm. But if we want human type consciousness, we need human type anatomy. And I do think human type anatomy can be computed on other substrates. So when you say human type anatomy can be computed on other on other substrates, you're saying building like a, a simulation of a human being inside a, inside a computer. Like when, yeah. Like so a, an artificial brain, um, put an artificial brain in a body, a robotic body. It might look just like a human body. It might be an organic hmm. body even, but developed artificially. Biotech. Yeah. And and I think that you at, at that point you have a more robust brain and body that continues to be conscious, and I would call that resurrection. Yep, it, 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 there's, that, that could well be a, um, a part of it. We're, we're still not sure whether that technology, though, is accessible to humans or if it requires you know, intervention from external to the simulation. Yeah, we would don't it, have it now. Would it have to be Would it have to be a physical body, do you think, Lincoln, or, 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 or could, could the substrate actually be what we call a virtual reality? Um, you know, for, for, for example, you know, following, following your logic, we take the, we'll say the organic brain and it's now uh, coupled as it were to, to the, the synthetic brain and uh, piece by piece, neuron by neuron, eventually the synthetic brain is now uh, embodying a full consciousness of, of uh, the human is a sort of the repository for the soul, if you will. Um, but then the human body, the synthesized human body, again, could it exist virtually so that this 
resurrected person is now existing in a in, in what we would think of as a virtual world and yeah does it matter I, I think so and i think that if we believe in the simulation argument then we believe we're already living in such a world hmm. and so yeah um my my comment about it being horrible to not have a body would be um it's more that's more commentary on empowerment Okay. Um, right. If I if I am living in a virtual world that's run by Elon Musk, then Elon Musk has total power over me. We mm. pretty much assume that God has total power over us right now. And, you know, we might have varying degrees of being OK with that. Most Christians probably are saying, OK, we, we trust God is compassionate and has our best interests in mind and wants to develop us into something more than we are now. So if we trust the person running that new computed world with to have similar intentions toward us, then it maybe wouldn't be so bad. But mm. if we if they put us in a black hole where we don't seem to have the kind of body that we now appreciate, I think we would go insane very quickly and essentially die. Yeah, I think we, we yeah, often you. underestimate how much our how much of our, our behavior and our personality is related to our bodies, not not just our mind. We we tend to, I think, deceive ourselves that we're very cerebral, but a, a lot of my I guess the feeling about myself comes from things I, I do with, with my body. When I ride, when I run, when I do exercise, you know, when I go swimming, uh, when, I, when I go surfing, all, all those things are, are core to, to my sense of myself. And when I feel pain, um, you know, that, that's core. When I need to feed myself when I'm hungry, when I'm tired. Uh, if, we, if we remove all those things, it, it fundamentally changes who we are. Amen. So do, we, yeah, do we simulate ourselves? Do we simulate those things for ourselves? And, those yeah, questions. resurrection would be insufficient without an environment in which to live yeah, and bodies to interact with it. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. All right. I just want to talk briefly about my day job in AI. And then I, I want to come back to, to some of what Lincoln says. Just what I'm doing at the moment can be described as um, a natural language processing um, project to support knowledge workers. And here's what we do with it. We get the knowledge. We plan how it's going to be used. Uh, and we, we basically we're producing what amounts to a fast and not particularly bright intern who over time will, will hopefully eventually improve. And I know what it, what it uh, consists of. It consists of this stuff. And we're, we're trying to emulate uh, as best as we can. Um, the best we can do is a fast is not a problem, but partic not particularly bright um, intern as a, as a support for, for knowledge workers. And quite frankly, I can't conceive this thing that, that I'm having a hand in, in creating. Well, I'm really on the specifying end of things. Um, I can't conceive it becoming conscious. Elon made a statement to the effect, if you can't tell the difference between interacting with it, then it could be conscious. And no, I'm, I'm just- What was this? Again, if, if you can't, what? If you can't tell the difference between, uh, from the Turing test, if you can't tell whether the the entity that you're speaking with is a human or not, then it could well be conscious. And I'm, I'm saying, well, no, I can, I can debunk that because I know what's there. I built the thing. I can. Let me, I can let me interject. Yeah. I just have to interject from a, I don't even know how to describe the, what a pattern way of thinking. You see the inner workings, right? So I see yeah. your results. It's a forest yep. for the trees. So my mind doesn't go to the place of all of the effort that you put in. And so when I look at the idea of, you know, can we throw more computing power and have it become conscience? To me, it's easy to think, yeah, eventually, yes. And I, I guess my question is, is like, do you see a correlation between the idea of when people look at consciousness and they think, I can't understand that. And it's a confusing mystery. And they kind of judge like at like a, a similarity where people judge each other because they can't see inside the brain of another person yeah. and understand their heart. Do you see a similarity there with the idea of you being able to see inside effectively the brain of the AI? And then like, I just, I don't know, for some reason, and, and then doubting that it could ever become, because I'm wondering, is our idea of conscious simply an i um, a pre-conceived disposition that says it's conscious because i can't understand it that's what i'm wondering 
And it feels like that's right to me because I can't understand it. And I don't know if that's right or not, but it feels that, like that's right. Yeah, it would have to be an alien conscience, consciousness. What do you mean by that? I, I think that what most people mean when they're trying to assess whether something is conscious or not mm -hmm. is that it would be conscious like us. And I think we don't give enough esteem to the possibility that it could be that a there are species. there's a possibility space that is gigantic that mm. we're a time human consciousness is one tiny dot in the in the consciousness possibility space but it's a very important dot it, to us it just seems to me when you're doing your work um when you're doing your work and creating your ai at your job and that that gives you a intern, not a very bright one, but nonetheless, some amount of response to your questions. Doesn't that seem like some amount of consciousness? Some amount. You not know, Lin Lincoln, um, that's an excellent point. Um, when I think of angels, for example, I do not know how an angel thinks. I, I don't even have a clue as to where I would begin to think of someone that's basically, I mean, extraterrestrial maybe is a word I'm thinking of, but, it, it, but we are so conditioned to make everything fit into our experience that I think it's very hard to think what is another, con does an octopus have a conscious? A very intelligent animal a very you know, different neural structure. Its brains are, its neurons are scattered in its arms. Yes. Um, so it's difficult to to think along those lines, and I, I'm glad that we're talking about this because maybe AI consciousness would be totally different. Not any less legitimate, but totally different. What does mm. it feel like to be an octopus? That's an interesting question to me. What does it feel like? Yeah, your yeah. brains are in your arms, dude. That's easy. <laughs> he just said it. Just joking. Right. That was easy. <laughs> All right. So, one one important thing whenever you're, you're dealing with uh, experts or, or highly opinionated individuals who are dead certain they're right, is to think about <laughs> their, their their worldview considerations. I mean. The, the number one false certainty is the God of the gaps. That anything we don't understand, we're going to stick God in there. But equally, there's a future science of the gaps. Anything we don't understand, science is going to explain one day. And it might not, because we could reach the limit of science. Um, do you know what I mean by turkey problem? Turkeys reckon humans are great because they give them lots of yummy food and they look after them and they're fed so well and, and loved and, and cared for until Christmas. So that's... Uh, but they never come back to report. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we've observed. Uh, and so the, uh, the future science of the gaps is, 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 is there's no certainty that we will reach there. So I'm always careful, and I, I guess it comes from a, a discipline of being an engineer, that you have to work on what you do know and what you don't know. And you have to really put a, a, a ring around uncertainty and say, that's uncertainty, and then in engineering senses, you put um, put factors of safety on it. Uh, certainly, a, there's a, a, a saying in our in the geotechnical space that you never know whether your factor of safety is right. You only know if it was wrong. Uh, so it might have been uh, massively too high, but if it doesn't fail, that's why you test until you things. fail. Yeah. So, um, so we. The, uh, and, I, and I haven't come across any other discipline actually other than engineering where you, where you know, a building's going to stand up or it doesn't. It's going to comply or it doesn't. There's, there's no ambiguity. Um, it doesn't get politicised. It doesn't matter whether you vote red or blue. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, I think it's a, a great level of critical thought. And so one thing that you have to do is be, be aware of various sins of thought logic. Um, I mentioned populism. Um, you have to be aware of manage, managing your internal emotions. Some people say things just because it belongs to their team and, and they, they're then taking a, a political, a spiritual, uh, a theological position um, based on their tribe or based on managing their own emotions, what feels good. Um, there's a, 
the list of cognitive biases. There's a great little website. If you can Google 50 cognitive biases, um, visual capitalist. Uh, I'll see if I, it's, um, it's a, a, a site that gives you this great um, list that's just coming up for me. Great list of cognitive biases. And um, when I'm out on the bike thinking about these things, sometimes I'll, before I leave, I'll, I'll go and pick one and say, right, uh, has, have I done that in the last month and, and try and teach myself not to. So I think that's a, that's a great discipline to, to try to do. Hey, could you put a link to that? I like yeah, I will. That. I'll stick it in the chat. I'm going to put that up in my church. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, um, I was talking, I was watching a movie with my kids called Spec, uh, what is it called? I just pulled it up. Spectral. And it's about yep. these soldiers who encounter this otherworldly force. At least they think it is. Yep. And so they bring the scientist in and say, you know, oh, it must be a ghost or something. And the scientist works out the problem. He said, well, if it's a ghost, how come it can't go through this or can't do this? And I was telling my kids, I said, this is what some of, my, of our fellow evangelicals don't do. Hmm. They don't work the problem. They have the, they have the answer before they have the solution. Yeah. Hmm. And this is the problem when it comes to AI and other things that a lot of conservatives already have the answer. Now they're just working out how to get to, to that answer. And anything that gets in the way is a problem. And I said, look at the way this scientist worked out the problem in the movie. Now, yeah, the problem at first was, well, how do these things exist? And he just worked it through it. And if you haven't seen the movie, I won't give it away, but it's a fascinating way of looking at how you have to use knowledge to work out a problem. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes tribalism or other things short circuit that process. Don't allow us to say, you know, well, can a robot ever have content? Well, of course not. God never said that and that's it, you know? So, yeah. so it kind of short circuits any possibility and it actually incurs hostility. Hmm. What are you yeah. trying to say? Are you trying to replace? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, let's work the problem. You know, this is, you know, there are lots of things we don't know that God created. I mean, to, um, 600 years ago, you would have been burned at the stake for saying that, you know, the earth goes around the sun. That's right. You know, it's, and it still went around the sun, whether you burn a hundred people or not. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, all so know that the answer is forty-two. We just need is. the question. Yes, yes. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and this, this is why I say, you know, the whole the whole idea of repentance, the, the Greek word is uh, is metanoia, change your mind. You know, so uh, that, that's our superpower, and. Uh, I'm sure your tradition's the same as mine. Mine was, was liturgical and you went there every Sunday and you made a list of all the things that you've done wrong and you said, right, I'm going to get that right next time. And you walk out of there feeling forgiven and a fresh start. Do that every week. Yeah, it's one of the most fundamentally mentally healthy things anyone can do. Yeah. Right. So let's keep going. Jonathan, are we keeping you too long? No, no, this is good. This is the time is great. One, one of the bits of technology that I'm really keen on is this IBM Project Debater. IBM Project Debater, um, people can give it a whole list of arguments and it will find those and it will work out whether they're for or against the, um, the proposition and then it will summarise them and it'll group them and say, so here's a bunch of people on this side of the debate who thought this and here's a bunch of people on this side of the debate who thought that. And that's, um, th th that process was, was really um, bipartisan. It was really reaching across the aisle. It was really accepting, you, know, you believe that, that's... Yeah, that, that's that's reasonable. It wasn't uh, dehumanising and doing all this um, crap that goes on more in your country than in mine, but I guess we'll get there eventually. We usually do. <laughs> so I want to talk about um, what, so what are the core facts? What are the things that we definitely, absolutely know on this topic of, of consciousness? Certainly that neural correlates will lead to powerful engineering and whole new things. Uh, you know, I, I may, we may be able to have a direct link to our, to our piano um, and, and play it without touching. 
We know that not all neurons are conscious. We know that they're not all in the brain. We know that they compute in a, in a different way. Uh, and we know that a lot of neurons compute without being conscious. Could I, fully... yep. could I rephrase that one a little bit? Sure, yep. I think what we know is that not all neurons impinge on our sense of con on our consciousness yeah yeah i think that's what we know i don't know that we know that they're not conscious that that's a good point i will i will take that as a correction lincoln i'll take that as a, a definite insight yeah um yeah that's a good one all right um consciousness can give rise to computation i think that that's more likely because we know consciousness can give rise to computation. I can say two plus two equals four. I can compute the trajectory of a, of a, a thrown ball, for instance. Um, consciousness can give rise to computation. Um, so maybe computation can give rise to consciousness. Uh, well, in the sense that the universe is a big computer, then yes, it is giving rise to consciousness, but that's uh, maybe a, at a, operating at a different level. We're operating at the level of the, the substrate of the simulation rather than the, the substrate of a computer. The hard problem, I think it's, it's likely to be, on, be beyond the reach of science. Why? Because right now, I'm certain that I'm conscious, but I have no certain evidence that anybody else on this call That's is right. conscious. <laughs> I don't think you're Chinese bots. You might be, you might be zombies. Right, but I have no evidence. So, uh, once again, those who are relying on on science, uh, uh, I've got to remember it might be a turkey problem. You might not get there. There's a lot of hot air out there. Uh, as I said, um, there's people making a living by taking outlandish positions on this topic, and you can then see. Well, I wonder why you're taking outlandish positions on a topic if you keep getting book deals and getting paid to, to talk and stuff. It is true that our substrate, as we say, changes continually. There are new molecules coming in and out of our brains all the time, but we still feel conscious. There is a, maybe a little caveat on this one too, and that is that um, general anesthesia and often sleeping are, yeah. are quite uh, considerable punctuations in the continuity mm. of consciousness. That, 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 that's a good point. They, yeah. Yeah, so consciousness is is never uh, consistent. You can you can be knocked out and you can come back. You can have gaps in your memory because of, of medical or, or head trauma or something. You can, uh, yeah. And I think, and we've got to remember that everyone is is operating on a on a faith worldview um, with a set of evidence filters. Yep. Anyone who says I'm looking at the evidence is. <laughs> looking at it has cherry picked. There's nobody who's, who's, anybody who's looked at all the evidence and not cherry picked any of it is uncertain. Anybody who claims they looked at all the evidence is lying. Yeah, that's right. Cause there's a hell of a lot of it and they haven't looked at the evidence that's, that's going on. Behind it. I can tell you this, they can't. They can't pick yours. So, so here's the suggested approach. Um, firstly, listen to the history of thought on this topic because there's been a lot of thought, a lot of smart people. So, um, have your own ideas, but then go and test them against what's been been down the ages, and ask what ask what factors are people ignoring. Remember that there's always a latest and greatest scientific discovery, and everyone thinks it's amazing and infallible. Or not, or if not debunked, it might get. Uh, but wait, there's more. It might get uh, nuanced changes. Uh, the neural correlates of consciousness. We got to we got to champion this. I've got a sense it's going to be huge. Um, we're going to be able to connect our brains to uh, to large computers. Uh, Lincoln suggests that we might be able to progressively transfer our consciousness. I guess you'd, you'd have to, to try that and then you'd have to try and um, prove it's possible. I'm, I'm not sure that I share that view. Uh, we're being told so far that Neuralink is is more about having um, a, a better connection to my mobile phone than I've got at the moment. It's a better connection to the internet. But 
and, and whilst that feels like a tool and it feels like an extension of myself, um, the qualia are still in here. They're not in my phone. And so the qualia move from my head via, via Neuralink, via Bluetooth to my phone. Mm. That, that's going to take some. That's going to take some improving and experiment. Yeah, we can experiment on that. That's one of the benefits of that approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Um, it's not knowable of total knowledge. I mean, if the von Neumann, if the von Neumann Wigner interpretation actually turned out to be true, that would be huge. Uh, that would solve. All You'd be able to design an experiment to see if a if an artificial being could could do that. But then that artificial being has got to be bigger than, and better than the current detectors we use. Now. Uh, it's, we don't know. It's a statement of faith to say science is changing everything, and it's a statement of faith to say that knowledge is all knowledge available to humans. Whenever we're listening to someone, um, think about their worldview, uh, especially if they if they're getting paid and if they rely on social media for a living. Um, our consciousness. I think it's reasonable to assume that our consciousness can be re-substantiated in some other substrate in the future. But it's uncertain whether that technolo technology is reachable by humans or if it remains um, the prerogative of the simulator or technology outside creation as we know it. And we should be advocating uh, you know, for Christian concepts. It's one thing to be conscious, but it's another thing to say my consciousness is being continuously transformed. My consciousness is going to be fit for eternal life. My, my conscious, I'm continually improving my cognitive biases. I'm continually improving my world. I'm continually learning things. Continually, you know, that's, that's what, if we're into, if we're Christian transhumanists, that's what we're, what we're believing. Jonathan? Yep. How do you understand Jesus's command to his disciples to raise the dead in relation to the second to last bullet point? Look, I think any reasonable reading of that command and the, the resurrections that occurred would imply continuity of consciousness. What happened um, whilst those people were dead I guess remains uh, uh, remains mystery, and there's a lot of near death experiences that we can we can talk about. All right, uh, yeah, I, I, I might have to take that question on notice, Link. Um, I would love to what? figure out how to follow that command. By the way, I haven't figured that one out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we could, uh, we'd all, we'd all love that. Uh, I know there's a group of people that our court who reckon they're, they're on the way to doing that. Uh, I, I remain an alcohol skeptic, but anyway. What, uh, any other, any other closing thoughts? I've got two people phoning me, reminding me I'm supposed to be somewhere else. It was awesome, Jonathan. All right, look, thanks everybody um, for listening. And I guess, who, who wants to do the next one? Hey, thanks for presenting. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I, love, I loved researching this topic and, and trying to understand it. Has anyone, uh, anyone got a particular desire to do, do a talk next month? On a, on a topic? That will speak at once. There's Timothy. I should assume that's Timothy Langer. How are you, Tim? Yes, you would be correct. I am. I'm doing okay. That's good. Keeping safe in the lockdown. I think. Yes, it's yeah. been. Uh, it's been interesting to see. Like this has never really happened before in my relatively hmm. shorter life than some people's. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I'll do next month if nobody else wants to do it. Yeah, I was going to pick on Lincoln because he hasn't done one yet. Oh, Lincoln. 
Yes. Lincoln hasn't done one. I thought he'd be the first person to do one. Well, maybe he's going to be the next person. What do you reckon, Link? Lincoln doesn't what want to embarrass like, us. What would you like me to do it on? Well, there's a, there's a poll on the on the Facebook group, so you can pick something from that, or you can pick another topic. But just whatever you reckon is the most engaging and interesting thing that will make people expand their worldview and think in a different way to what they've ever thought before uh, in an informative and well you can probably be more entertaining than I've been I've probably sound like a dull boring engineer but uh, you were excellent I loved this oh good thank you feedback um how about I walk the group through the new god argument you that that would be an excellent one yeah I'd, I'd enjoy that I'm sure we all I was would. actually going to suggest that if nobody said anything. Let's do it. All righty. That's, the, that's the, uh, the will of the meeting. So we will reconvene um, the other side of Christmas. So look, everyone have a, a really blessed, happy and holy festive season. And uh, we'll all talk soon. Thanks again, Jonathan. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. This was great. Right. Thanks a lot. Good evening yeah, yeah. to good evening to know all of you. A little bit anyway. Bless season yeah. of Christmas. Yeah, very, very well. Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Bye. Yeah, likewise, everyone. Merry Christmas.